So let's address whether or not there was a blue wave or not because I hear a lot from people who say, no, this wasn't a blue wave. Well, let's look at what happened to the Democrats before. When they lost 50 plus seats, what really happened there was about half of those seats were gerrymandered, which means you take a state like Pennsylvania, that's 56, 57 percent Democrat, 43 percent Republican. You then have the governor and the legislature of that state rewrite the gerrymandering laws so that 75 percent of the House representatives from uh, Pennsylvania, 75 percent, become Republican. So that's how the Republicans got 50 plus seats in two elections. Pure gerrymandering, okay? If you look at the percentage difference in the popular vote, it was two or three percent. Now, what is the election we've had in the modern era in which we've had the largest percentage difference? Okay? It was in 2018. The Democrats got six million more votes nationwide than the Republicans. Yet, they only got 40 seats because gerrymandering is still in place in lots of places like Ohio, like Michigan, uh, these like battleground states. Gerrymandering doesn't really make an effect in states like, uh, like uh, Texas and, uh, and California because these states are overwhelmingly going in one direction. So it, it doesn't really make that much a difference. So, this was an absolute blue wave. Now, the people who say it's not a blue wave point out to statements that were made by, uh, by uh, basically Democrat or progressive leaning websites during the election. So what happened during the election itself in the first hour, it looked like it was going to be really good for the Democrats. Hour two, three, and four looked like it was going to be really bad for the Democrats because then what you saw happening is the governor and the a senator race in uh, Florida started going for the Republicans. So then uh, Trump actually had a party. Uh, yeah, he was sitting there and he was very excited when that was happening. What happened? from hour five onwards was an absolute onslaught. Every battleground state, uh, and even states that were not battleground, okay? Places where Trump had won the election by 20 points, uh, you saw Republicans losing left and right, okay? So despite the gerrymandering, we got 41 seats, maybe 42. Now, we lost the Senate. Well, the Senate was lost anyways. Uh, this is like, a, frankly, a bullshit uh, argument. I don't like intellectual dishonesty. And this argument is intellectually dishonest that you guys won the House, we won the Senate. First of all, there was 35 senators up for re-election. Of those 35 senators, 26 were Democrat, nine were Republican. So in order for the Democrats to win the Senate, they'd have to have a plus four, okay, in a situation where they're defending 80% of the seats, okay? So that was never gonna happen. They lost a couple of Senate seats, they won a couple of Senate seats, all right? What's gonna happen now in 2020? is going to be an absolute onslaught on the Senate front as well. Because guess what's happening in 2020? There's another 35 senators up for re-election. Of those 35 senators, yeah, 26 are Republican and nine are Democrat. Yeah? That's when you take the Senate. That's when people like Susan Collins 
uh, and uh, Murkowski and these, you know, pseudo uh, uh, moderate Republicans are gonna get wiped out. Okay, they're gonna get wiped out because they're dishonest and because the coattails of Trump okay, lead to the toilet. Now. So we know for sure it was a blue wave. No doubt about it. All right? And the blue wave continues. So, gets me thinking. Do we really want Trump impeached? That's the next video.